So, so far, when we talk about manipulating binary integers, we typically talk about performing arithmetic operations such as add or subtract. But what if I told you that not only could you perform addition and subtraction on binary numbers, but you could also perform logical operations such as anding. This is what's referred to as bitwise operations. Now, on a surface level, bitwise operations don't sound too terribly useful. In fact, they sound downright useless. But if you'll just give me a second here, I can actually show you that there is actually a use to bitwise operations. So first things first, how do bitwise operations work? Well, much like arithmetic operations, we typically uh, perform them on a bit-by-bit -bit basis. So we take the least significant bit of bit A, and we add it to the least significant bit of bit B, and that produces the sum of the two. And any carry that gets generated generates or gets carried over to the next column. And we operate on the bits column by column until we make our way all the way to the end. Bitwise operations work much the same, except instead of performing an arithmetic operation between the bits and worrying about a carry, we're just performing a pure logical operation between each set of bits. So in the case of anding two numbers together, what we would do is we would start with any set of bits. It really doesn't matter since we're not dealing with a carry, the order doesn't matter. But we start with a set of bits and we compare the two. Since the operation is AND, we're looking for both inputs to be 1, since there's a 0 in both positions, the answer is 0. Likewise, with these two sets of bits, the answer is 0. Likewise, with these two there. And in this position, of course, because both A and B have a 1, the answer is going to produce a 1. So the result of A and B is going to be this number right here. Likewise, with an A or B, you simply perform the logical operation on a bit-by-bit -bit basis between the two numbers to produce your, your result, which is why they call it a bitwise operation. So if we were to OR A and B, well, 0 OR 0 is 0, 1 OR 0 is 1, 0 OR 1 is 1, and 1 OR 1 is 1. So the result of A or B in this instance results in this number. Likewise, with exclusive OR, since we're dealing with all forms of binary Boolean operations, we may as well include this one as well. Uh, but exclusive OR operates the same way, uh, looking at each number on a bit-by-bit -bit basis, comparing the two bits, and performing the logical operation. So 0 XOR 0 is going to be 0, 1 XOR 0 is going to be 1, 0 XOR 1 is going to be 1, and 1 XOR 1 is going to be 0. So performing A, X, or B on these two numbers results in this number right here. In fact, it doesn't even have to just be binary operations. It could be unary operations, too. For example, here, if I wanted to take the logical inversion of the number A here, well, all I have to do is just look at each bit and invert them. So if it's a 0, it's now a 1, and if it's a 1, it's now a 0. And this is the unary bitwise operation not on this number. So that's all a bitwise operation is. It's simply performing some kind of a logical operation between the bits of two binary integers instead of just two bits themselves. And representing that schematically speaking is fairly straightforward. Uh, we actually have two options here. Uh, we can just draw our normal logic gate, uh, which would represent, of course, our bitwise operation. We could draw it, draw it as we normally would, uh, but instead of leaving them as single lines, we can, of course, denote that these are whole buses. And, of course, denoting just how many bits are in this bus is important. So in this case, we have a bitwise operation AND being performed between two 8-bit integers and producing an 8-bit integer itself. The other option, of course, is we can draw the bits out individually. So we can draw an AND gate here and say that that takes A0 and B0 and produces Q0. And then draw another AND gate, say that that takes A1 and B1 and produces Q1 and we do that so on and so forth with the rest of the bits. Either way is valid. Personally I prefer this one because it's a little bit cleaner but there are some applications where this is actually necessary but ultimately speaking this is how you would represent that form of operation. Alright so that definitely explains how bitwise operations work but what exactly are they useful for? One use of bitwise operations is the ability to set and clear specific bits in an integer. So say I have a binary integer here, and I want to set this bit right here, meaning I want to turn it on. What I could do is I could take this number right here and just add the two together, and that would definitely work. That would definitely turn that bit on and leave all other bits the same. But what if that bit is already a 1? If it is already a 1, then that's going to produce a carry and turn this bit on. And if our goal was to just turn this bit on without adjust, uh, affecting any of the other bits, adding is not going to do that for us. 
Instead, what if we logic ORed them together? So instead of adding them together, we instead just do a bitwise OR operation. Well, this number would end up being a 1, likewise this one, this would remain a 0. This bit would end up being a 1, this would remain a 0, and these would remain 1, 1, 0, 1, respectively. By ORing them together, what we've effectively created is a new number that is exactly the same as the old number, just with that one bit set. And this works even if this bit is already set. If this bit is already a 1 and we perform this OR operation, it doesn't change the number. So this is effectively a way of setting that bit, or rather ensuring that that bit is set to a 1. So what if that bit is already a 1 and we want to clear it? What if we want to turn that 1 into a 0 and not affect any of the other bits? Well again, we can perform a subtraction of uh, this number right here. Um, and that, of course, will clear that number and should theoretically leave all bits unaffected. But if this bit is a zero and we perform this operation, that's going to start borrowing from these bits right here. It's going to affect these bits uh, as a result of it, and that's not what we want. So instead, what we can do is we can perform an AND operation. Now, if we perform an AND operation with this number alone, what's going to end up happening is this bit is going to remain a 1 or a 0 or whatever it was initially and all other bits are going to be forced to 0. Uh, that is the exact opposite of what we're wanting. We're wanting to turn this bit into a 0 and leave all other bits unaffected. So we can't use this number right here, we actually have to use the inverse of it. So by inverting the secondary number and performing an AND operation uh, what we end up with is we end up with what we call a mask uh, and this mask, when applied to this first number, is going to reset any number where the zero is in the mask and leave the number exactly the same wherever there's a one. Uh, and we know this to be true because, of course, a one and a one is going to result in a one, but a zero in either position is going to result in a zero. And so if I perform the bitwise operation on each of these bits, we can see that the number remains unchanged except for in the bit where there was a zero in the mask. And so this operation uh, effectively allows us to clear single bits in an integer without affecting the rest of the number. In fact, I say this number is called a mask, but in actuality, any number that is used to affect the bits of another number is referred to as a mask integer. So this number right here, when performing an AND operation to clear bits, is referred to as a mask. Uh, and this integer right here, which is used to set bits uh, through an OR operation, is also called a mask. In fact, in case you didn't realize it, you can actually use these masks to set or reset multiple bits. It doesn't just have to be one bit at a time. So here I have a mask that has a 0 and 3 positions. And again, with this mask, uh, anywhere there's a 1, the number's going to remain unchanged. So we can actually just fill those in as they are. Uh, but anywhere where there's a 0, the number is going to get set to 0, or reset, or cleared, however you want to look at it. So those are going to be 0 and that's going to be zero. So with this mask, what we've done is we've cleared these three bits right here uh, and produced this number as a result. Now, on top of setting and clearing bits, you can also use bitwise operations to toggle bits, and you can use the exclusive or bitwise operation to do that. So if I have a number here and I want to toggle this bit, uh, this bit, and this bit, so that they are the opposite of themselves, what I can do is I can generate a mask uh, with a 1 in all of those positions, and zeros everywhere else. And then when I perform an XOR operation, anywhere that there's a 0, the number is going to remain unchanged. Because a 0 XOR 0 is going to produce a 0, and an, a 0 XOR 1 is going to produce a 1. However, a 1 XOR 1 is also going to produce a 0. You'll notice that with the 1 in the upper position, uh, the end result is going to be the opposite of 1, which is a 0. And likewise, 0 and 1 XOR is going to result in 1, which is the opposite of that top bit there. So that's going to produce a 1, that's going to produce a 0, and this one is going to produce a 0 as well. So performing this exclusive or bitwise operation with this mask toggles these bits individually, and the result is those bits becoming the opposite of themselves, while the rest of the bits remain unaffected. So how about a practical example here? My favorite example is the example of an air conditioning unit system uh, that involves bits as uh, flags for whether or not a heater element is on in a particular room. So suppose we had an 8-bit number, something like maybe this, and each one of these bits represents a, a room in the house. So this may be the you know upstairs bedroom 
one. Uh, this may be upstairs bedroom two. Um, these may be like upstairs or downstairs bedroom. Maybe this is downstairs bedroom one, bathroom, and then these may be kitchens or, or, or things like that. Point is, each one of these bits represents the heater element in that room. Uh, if I wanted to perform a query on this number and you know ask the question, are any of the heating elements upstairs on? What I could do is I could perform a bitwise operation between all the bits that represents upstairs heating elements. So maybe this one's upstairs and this one's upstairs and all the others are downstairs. So what this would be then is this would be our upstairs mask. And what I can do is I can perform an AND operation between the two. And uh, of course if the upstairs um, bedroom is or upstairs bedroom 1 is on, that's going to result in a 1. Uh, upstairs bedroom 2 is 0, so that's going to be a 0, and we can, of course, perform the operation on the rest of the bits. And so if we wanted to ask if any of the upstairs heating elements were on, what we could do is we could compare uh, this number to 0. And we just ask, is this number equal to 0? If it's not, that means at least one of the upstairs heating elements is on. Now, if we were to ask, are all the heating elements upstairs on. Well, that's a different story. What we instead would want to do is we would want to compare this number to our mask. And so if the mask is equal to the resulting number, all of our upstairs heating elements are on. But if it differs in any way, the numbers are not going to be equal, and that means that at least one of the heating elements is off. That's a very, you know, small and it's kind of an impractical example of this sort of thing, but it does get the idea across of the uh, the use and usefulness of bitwise operations. Now, this is something that we're going to be seeing more often later on, especially when we start covering uh, topics of computer architecture and programming. For the time being, of course, just keep it in the back of your head. Like I said, this does have some uses in combinational logic, and we'll, of course, see this pop up from time to time. But again, we're going to be seeing more use and usefulness of it in the computer architecture section of the playlist.